Hi everybody, my name is Mark Machado. I'm a realtor with Corcoran Global Living and I'm a proud sponsor of Donuts for Breakfast and we are The Remedy. I believe that Desire to Inspire Studios is a great and safe place for kids to learn. Uh, the opportunity to be able to come out and experience what it's, it's like to be on a set, experience what it's like to work with other people, experience what it's like to have to create and build relationships with people that you're gonna work with is so important. We need to respect our youth and we need to teach them, we need to help them grow. And I think this is a great opportunity for um, us uh, and myself as a sponsor uh, to, help those, to help those kids grow. If you like this programming and like helping our youth, please consider sponsoring the show. Thank you. Hey, um, welcome to a uh, Thursday morning, 9A1, 9A1, 901. Uh, donuts for breakfast. And uh, we are here this morning. Our fantastic team, not our entire team, but actually our entire team is here today. And we have a couple of apprentices with us. Uh, shout out, hello, apprentices. Hello. Yo. Hello. Nice. I don't know if you heard that. Shouting. That was, that was, that was, that was, that was good. Was good. That was a, a, a subdued high. No, that was Trevor, good. you got everybody up at 7 a.m. to be here by 9 or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Are you kidding me? These kids, these kids are probably half asleep at this point. <laughs> um, we know how that feels. So anyway, yeah, I know I am. We are here for Donuts for Breakfast, and uh, this is uh, week two of our generational wealth Video podcast. Video podcast. <laughs> and it occurred to me to, um, you know, I, I, I appreciate what we're doing, but I, I wasn't sure exactly what it meant. So I, I Googled it. What does generational wealth mean? According to credit.com, what is the meaning of generational wealth? Generational wealth is assets that parents pass down to their children and, ideally, their children's children. Yeah, so it's old money. Well, not Put, if you're creating it now. Putting it, putting it another way. Yeah, but yeah, so that's setting up now right. for the future. But right. in other ways, it's it's that old money of like being getting rich older and older times, and then your descendants of assets over time, passing down and sustaining of assets over time. Very better. Thank and you, it, professor. And that and was it also good. Says well, substantial. So, what does substantial mean? An estate of trust fund. Investments, conservatorship, guardianship. Is there a minimum amount to that thing? No, but 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 it's as important as as uh, what we do emotionally and spiritually to our families to help them sustain. Why it's important to have that. That part. That is that is just as important about the generational wealth hand hand down as the actual assets itself is how to maintain them, how to think smartly about them, how to have appropriate emotional connections to those assets. And that um, I think kind of falls into the, the slang or colloquialism of old money versus new money is old money knows how to manage that money, not just literally, but also emotionally and intellectually. And new money is that, you know, over the top spend because you have it, like don't know how to act because you've suddenly come into that that lack of emotional and, and intellectual uh, bandwidth to be to, to be wealthy. I think that's part of the process. Excellently put. So it's like thinking about like if you were just uh, given a million dollars or two million or ten million or a billion, mm -hmm. uh, what would you do with it? What happens to lotto people sometimes? Yeah, right. most, they, lotto people, most people, they ruin their lives because they don't know how to handle that amount. Of Not always, but some. Times. But but the other thing is when you are uh, blessed with good fortune, good, good uh, luck, good uh, fate, uh, karma, whatever you want to call it, the wisdom that needs to arrive with it mm -hmm. is the Solomonic wisdom of Solomon who scripturally – helped try to describe to people how to maintain that. What he said was, I have more than any other person in the history of, of time. And what I have found out is none of it means anything. It's all vanity of vanities and a chase after the wind repeated endlessly through great literature, again, through uh, Shakespeare and others, but, and Dickens, but this issue is something 
I try to help people with who are extremely wealthy and finding themselves now because of COVID-19 really in struggle because they've amassed huge fortunes and there's poverty of an incredible nature right in front of them. And you cannot look the other way. As Dr. King said, if you look the other way, you're already dead. You'll, you'll go on to the end of your days, never knowing who you might have become, what you could have done, what you might have accomplished if you look the other way mm. when you're indifferent to the suffering around you. Mm. So the thing is, is that what we, our conversation has to be about is how to help a family, how to help your neighbors know what true wealth is. Mm -hmm. How do we know what wealth is? Well, if you go to Dickens, uh, Dickens was described as a man who was as solitary as an oyster in his pain. He had everything. It amassed a huge fortune, but he was miserable, angry, bitter, toxic, and vicious to, to, to the charities. Then he had a, a, an awakening experience that uh, Dickens was excellent at predicting. He was a wise person. And what's great for us and to have this discussion is that I think I spend more time, th this is going to sound ironic, but sometimes I spend more time with wealthy people trying to help them adjust than I do with folks who are homeless, who I can help if I can get to the wealthy and go, there's a need here. Make sense? Does that make sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. I, I'm I'm old now, you know. I'm in my seventies, and I've watched it over the years. And I, you know, I love you guys. I mean, you're important to me because you're with these young interns here. You're teachers. I mean, we're all teachers in our own way. We're teachers of neighborhood and neighborhood. Well, and I think that was one of the reasons why we got together as a team today. And there's three different generations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the someone helped me with the generation. Well, it's like I still don't know which one. Mine, I'm. your guys is over there in the middle, and Mike Boomer. over there. Yeah, they have. They Boomer, did, names, right? did, yeah. Boomer. Boomer, Boomer, Millennial, Millennial. No, we're not millennials. We are millennials. We're elder millennials. Oh, I'm an elder. All right. Ha ha, Simpson. Eh, millennial, Zennial. You can put me in whatever. It's, Gen Z, Millennial, Zennial. Would you say to yesterday, Zen, Zen, Zennial? Zennial. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're at the back end of the Millennials and at the front end of yeah. uh, Generation Z. Z. And then what about our apprentices that are hanging out watching right now? Those are you're, they're be Gen Z, all right? Gen Z. Gen Z's, Gen Z's Gen Z. yeah. Firmly Gen Z. Kennedy or Gen so Z, Zen, Zennial or? Zennial. Yeah, Zennial. whatever. Zennial. Yeah, right, now, right? It's like all yeah. these fun buzzwords that you got to so keep track of. From man. Boomer to... To Gen Z. Gen Z. Gen Z. Cool. And uh, talking about generational wealth and, you know, having it and not having it. And um, I think today is part of also that's just kind of dispelling the myths around it or or just getting around the same page. Clarification. Clarification, right? Yeah. What it looks like, the differences uh, on, a, on a community level, what generational wealth Excellent. looks like in the end. That's a conversation that needs to happen as well. Yeah. What is, what is, what is, it to us that the community thrive around us because if <laughs> this is constantly what I tell people, if we don't empower community through wealth and privilege mm -hmm. and circumstances like that, it can be uh, insufferably hard on us when it comes back in the form of violence out of resentments. Hmm. Violence out of resentments like violence towards the rich, violence yes, towards yeah. the wealth. Well, I mean, we've had revolutions over that. This is why of this course. is important. We've yeah. had huge revolutions. There's uh, the French Revolution. When they were walking people, uh, Christopher, to the uh, guillotine, uh, Robespierre, uh, who was the narcissistic kind of leader, um, was pointing out people that needed to be decapitated and sent off. And finally, when they found out he was duplicitous and that he was a phony and he was disingenuous. Went right, right for him too. They they took him, the crowd, the mob took him. And yeah. so what he said uh, was, uh, the you know, the crowd loves me. I'm their father. No child ever wants the death of their father. And five minutes later, and so what we know is that 
jealousy is, is a harsh thing to deal with. And it's important for us to teach this to our financial people. Like uh, Jason last week, he was, this guy's a genius. Yeah. I want that guy in every rich person's face going, I'm the son of an immigrant and my father works hard. I love you and I care about you. I care about our country, but you need to listen to my wisdom. And he's young. Mm -hmm. He's like right. wise young. I'm glad that I, in what I do, get a chance to meet that guy. He was, yeah, his spirit was awesome. It was just great for me. So then would it be a conversation on sharing the wealth or managing the wealth for future generations? Both. Okay. And kind of one Thank of you, things we talked about was tying in what we do in that regard. Right. Of, of giving people the opportunity to pursue their passion as a career and giving them a career option. Right. Starting that path. And I was right. like, oh, that's kind of brilliant. I didn't think about that aspect. So one of the more touchy subjects of generational wealth as it pertains to the hey, that was no <laughs> Get up. that was yeah, no, that was amazing. And professorial, I, as always. Well, and I think a lot of that also goes to the Gen Z, if I get it right, um, which is our She's youngest demographic. I, hate, I just don't understand it. I can never, the, the stacks that can numbers and years and words. Anyway, um, you know, what I understand is for the most part, like they don't want, they don't want a job, right? They want to do something that means something. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's not it's no longer about, you know, I need to work for 60 years for a company to get a pension. Those are all but gone. Right? Oh, that's absolutely oh, yeah. right. Do you guys know what a pension is? No, yeah, probably not. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't, want to know I don't know what that is. It sounds very close to detention. Right. You know, yeah. which I'm familiar Something with, to but avoid. Anyway, Pensions um, were amazing once upon a time. Right. But the idea is now it's like they want to pursue something that makes a difference. That, something that they're passionate about. Right? We're able to see that. Like there's never before been the ability to do that in such a diverse way. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, with That's also true. having a business be online, whether it be something like video production or a Twitch streamer who's mm -hmm. playing ARC <laughs> or, what, or, you know, an Etsy seller, what have you. Mm -hmm. There are so many opportunities for people to turn their, their hobby into a, a, a career. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So it's we're we're great. We're getting there. We're getting towards that that technology path. is very helpful in all that, hasn't it? Ben? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right? Especially when it works. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, goods and services. You know, my yeah. husband and I talk about how both of us have always kind of been like, God, I miss the barter system. Like, oh man, goods and services. Don't even get me goods and services. That. Like, I got eggs, you got milk. Let's yeah. do this. You yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. But. In a, we're coming into a new kind of kind of era where, yes, we still have paper money. Yes, we we now have completely fabricated money that doesn't actually exist in reality. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, is still, you mean? Yes, yeah, yeah. Like, Bitcoin. it's still still kind of weird Doge to me. Um, Dogecoin, you know, but this this goods and services exchange is yeah. changing and evolving. Oh really, my God. really, Cesar. <laughs> <laughs> I still love you, dude. Don't worry about it. Those things happen to you. But interestingly, be hard on yourself, dude. On the lines of um, entrepreneurship and um, kind of pursuing what you want to do, we've also had uh, an evolution as far as um, child rearing and what we believe children are capable yes. of and what they're capable of understanding. I just read an article and watched an interview with a pair of siblings. Uh, one is nine, the other one is 11, and they're both stock traders. And they teach a what? class to adults yeah. and no, children on trading yes, stocks. No, Sign me yes, up. they are. Oh, yeah. How old are they? Nine? nine? Nine and 11, I think, or maybe nine and 10. It depends yeah. on how a parent focuses. Right. The, the child, even the neurodiverse ch children and the uh, the neuroplasticity of children, oh, they man. can learn five languages. That is the most accurate right. statement: the yeah. neuroplasticity of children. Yeah, and, and I mean, have I'm, I'm around kids. I'm around. I know, but I'm around kids that say the most profoundly wise things, almost as if they were incarnated or reincarnated 
from some wise uh, wise star child. What and, cracks me up, Mike, is that you you do tend to talk to these philosopher kids. Yeah. Because you, you tell me a lot of stories about yeah. that. And I just keep thinking back to myself as a child. Hmm? And how different that would have been. Your Nobody drew it out of you, that. though. Grimshaw, I love you. You're such a wise soul. But <laughs> oh, nobody you. sat and said, yeah. when you were five, because I did it with him. I was five then. But yeah, but I've always been five, actually. Well, so when he was on the show, I kept saying, this guy and Long and, and uh, Barbieri, I, these guys are And they went into business for themselves, all of them. And they, they, they accomplished things. Yeah. The girls and guys that I had on the show at 16, after the shooting, after the, the violence, and if you picture what brought that on, two privileged kids from wealthy homes in Colorado, parents, uh, both fathers were military people, built weapons to kill their classmates out of rage for being bullied. Now, you have to have that conversation with the generation not from that area. And that was he and his uh, classmates at San Rafael and San Marin. I was overwhelmed with how wisdom had moved forward from the, the arc of that violence. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. as I tell kids all the time, violence doesn't have a zip code. It can happen anywhere. Yeah. But this privilege, you think, okay, picture this, a kid who is privileged and wealthy and from a wealthy family and uh, he's white, starts to get tormented, teased, ridiculed, shunned, shamed, and humiliated. And he begins to plan a way to cry with bullets instead of tears and gets to a point where he exterminates his best friend and his best friend exterminates him. This is nihilism at its worst why this conversation needs to happen for kids. I'm thinking about this all the time because I love you guys and I want you to inherit the Marin County I raised my beautiful kids in. Mm. And when I see my son being a doctor, taking care of dying people in New York and New Orleans and as an ER doctor, and my other son who's a writer professor does what you guys do, teaching kids and having interns and people. And then my daughter is a therapist. I think I raised such a, a creative, diverse family. And that's what we need to make sure, does, as you said, what your mom brought you up to become. And you are everything she could have ever dreamed of in the, the, the Sarah wisdom you have. You are the embodiment of what the dream is. And my kids are for me mm -hmm. what I wanted. Yeah. And so this conversation is important. And if you sat with these little kids, you would be so filled with hope. You would never be depressed. You'd say the world is moving in a good direction. Exactly. Right. And to, to, to go back to saying that you think that it would be really different. Do you feel like as a very young child, every, anybody sat down and took you seriously? No. Oh, absolutely not. No, no. And that's the difference. The antsy it's, kid, you yeah. know, cats in stone class. Yeah. Yeah. We right. now live in a generation where people recognize that children are people and deserve to be listened to. And right. that makes all the difference in the world. I grew up in a silent right house. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't listened to. Nobody cared what I had to say. Like, but you listen to your kids. Oh my gosh. I have the <laughs> best conversation yeah, with my kids. They're brilliant. They're so <laughs> smart and awesome. funny and witty and clever. Yes. And yes. they're incredible. And I still struggle to not put limits on what their capacity is that's that's part of what being a parent is is looking at looking at your child and making sure that you aren't you aren't putting a ceiling on what they're capable of wow like because the rest of the world will the rest of the world will you tell gotta them write their a whole book. life you gotta what they can and can't do and your job as a parent is to tell them that that is an untruth right. and to take it back again to the idea of generational wealth, um, you know, my mom worked for the city. She had a really good pension. Like she retired because her pension check would have been higher than her paycheck. So that's why she retired. Yeah. And that was not a conversation that we had. We didn't talk about what a pension was. We didn't talk about what that would look like. 
Why do you think you were left out of that conversation? Because that was not a, that wasn't a conversation for, for children. You didn't talk about yeah. money mm. with yeah. children in my family. And that's another aspect of that lack of, of education with regard mm -hmm. to generational wealth. I mean, I as an adult, I was informed about things that happened fiscally with my family. And at at the level of, of inform, information I've received now, it is appalling how poorly managed funds had been by my parents. My pa my dad owned an apartment building in Oakland that he came into because of an accident that he had. And rather than seeing it as an investment, it was just something to buy. And when it became a burden, it was sold. Mm -hmm. That would have been the start of generational wealth for my family. And those, those moments are just missed moments. And that's, that's what we want to prevent. That's what we want to see moving forward is why enrichment classes now include finance and right. financial education for ages for third graders and up in my school. I think that when I meet military families, and, and this is why these, these conversations, military families are, are amazing people. One of the, the young kids I work with, he said, Miss Pritchard, I was born in the ghetto. And uh, when I joined the Marine Corps, I was, everybody started equal. Everybody started equal. So I could achieve. They couldn't hold me back because it was a, it was a fair and even playing field. Mm -hmm. And he said, I enlisted so I could become enlightened about why it is important to provide justice early to uh, competition. Amazing statement. Because if you're judged... I don't think I've ever heard that about no. military before in my life. Never. Well, of course, but... but so, <laughs> But, but it makes a lot of sense when you say it. You, well, yeah. when you see them, okay, you 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 picture, everybody pictures, yeah. this military guy goes off to war. One of my guys, Brian Iglesias is a captain. He says, Big Mike, uh, we went on a humane mission to the Philippines where a mudslide had buried a whole school. And my young Marines were 17, 18, and 19. He was a, I think he was a lieutenant, first lieutenant or a captain. And he said, uh, we had to recover bodies from the mudslide. And my young men had not been prepared emotionally for yeah. what the devastation was going to be on them spiritually, yeah. emotionally. How could they? And you come out of that. And he said, when we formed up after we had done all our relief work and we had helped the village and helped them emotionally, spiritually and other ways, that was my proud moment of being a Marine Corps captain and marching out with my guys in a good fashion, thinking, okay, we don't just go to war. Mm. we help people who are suffering and that's the thing that is lost on many folks who want to condemn the good that is done out, out there in the world globally by by all of us and, and um you know as a former medic i took care of tons and tons of wounded people and i learned something about compassion that had lasted me all through my life to have compassion for everybody mm -hmm. and the, the the one weird kind of I, ironic thing is I, I think I've been taught the compassion for the wealthy and the privileged who are distanced from their emotion, not to judge them as much to try and find a way to intervene and confront and enlighten them. I'm still working on that. <laughs> not there yet. Still working on that. What's our first reaction is anger and resentment, correct? Correct. Uh, I don't think resentment, more frustration. Okay. How about I mean, that? I'm not, I'm not angry and resentful because I, I did grow up in Marin. So there's yeah. a certain affluence right. regardless, but I think like frustration and confusion. And I think that has to do with my generation of yeah, affluence. You are, you are the answer. You're the medicine. Maybe. You're the medicine. No, no, not maybe. Yes. Because you're, you're teaching you're teaching these young people, and they need you, desperately need you. It's a lot of weight. <laughs> right on your shoulder right well, now. Was Grimshaw I mean, looking at me when he said a lot of weight? Like it was bad too. Uh, you know, it's like the, the education of it, right? Mm. And, the, and the purpose of kind of like why we're having this discussion about generational wealth, mm. right? Obviously, we can go in every direction because these conversations are great. Yes. I but think. it's, you know, it's like, one of the things that I, I, I kick myself now for is, you know, I didn't realize it until several years later, but I was making $50,000 a year 
under the table <laughs> when I was 17. Yep. <laughs> And I had no clue just with if how much work I was doing. And my educated. parents, well, my parents hounded me all the time. Just put 10% away. Just put 10% away. But, did they but they didn't, but I never did why? because I was like, I can always just go get more money. They right? didn't give and me I didn't, the why. I didn't understand it. And I don't know that I was obviously ready to listen because right. I wasn't really ready to listen to anything except for my own will at yeah. that moment in time. But it's like, you know, several years later I learned and then I went, Oh, oh, if I would have put $5,000, yeah. $5, I would have $50,000 in the bank. And now understanding what I do understand about compound interest over 10 years, I'd be like, oh, damn. Yeah. yeah. Right. And um, those are the, yeah, I did the same thing when yeah. I was in my twenties, I was making money hand over fist right. and I was a little bit more educated about finances, but not terribly. And I look back and I'm like, I would have had a down payment for a house here <laughs> right now yeah. if I had just yeah. made a different right. choice. But I think that that's also part of where technology becomes a huge um, window into other people's lives in a way that's productive. Um, you know, retiring at 35, you know, yeah, these sure. like these little catchphrases where people are, you know, living fulfilling lives right. and using their money to live as opposed to living to like, you know, make their money. Right. We can give examples to young people now. Right. Save your money because this is what your life would look like. Right. Save your money because these are the things that you, that right. the choices that you can make in 10 years mm -hmm. because you do this now. And I think that that's, again, a redefinition of generational right. wealth. That's these, as we move into a more global education and a more community-based based, based education, we have to think about how we how we um, award this behavior. And it needs to be done in a way that's philanthropic. It right. needs to be done in a way that is fulfilling both internally and externally. Why, um, <clears throat> excuse me, why do you think it's <clears throat> been so difficult for this sort of education to be indoctrinated into our society? I mean, the most I have been taught about our economics was in senior year of high school where I was taught essentially pay off your credit card every month. And that's about it. Like here are the dangers of credit card, <laughs> At least debt, you got that much. which is a good thing. You, you know, know you, you get scared straight with like, yeah, you, you know, or no, not even that, just how to write a check. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like What's the only thing, you know, we watched some documentary about a woman who like got $10,000 of credit card debt. Our teacher was like, don't do that. Does that, that sounds smart to me. I won't do that. <laughs> but that's, that's it. I don't, I mean, I'm, I was telling you guys, I'm just now doing my own research on planning for retirement or just learning how to make sound investments for my future. Right. Why do you planning, think that's so important for you, Chris? Well, because I don't want to be pinching pennies, but by, by the time I'm, I'm, I have a family or that I'm yeah. an old man, you know, I want to be worrying about it now so that I don't have to do it in 40 years. You want to be able to sit in your backyard and watch an egret land in the canal. That would be nice. That's the watch, dream. <laughs> and watch the little grandkid running back and forth by the swimming pool. And I'm sitting there going like this. That's it. That's what you want. That face. Just the... yeah. That's it. Yeah, okay. Well, it's so... just like you're reading my mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I was going to say, so a lot of that goes to, I mean, we just had that conversation recently. Like you're looking at moving out and getting your own apartment. And, and, and it's like, well, do you know your numbers? Right. Mm. Right, like yeah, what? I know numbers. Yeah, <laughs> all I, of I them. Count the the 10, concept, right? you know, <laughs> At some um, point you I had to put two and two that, together. Right? Huh. Um, but you know, the other side of it is, is, and maybe this is an entire another conversation. But I was realizing, um, I was thinking about this this morning on my drive up. Is like, look, I'm I'm living the life that I want to live. I yes. live in a place where I want to live, and and I've dreamed about as a kid and, and grew up. Like, I it. have a pretty epic freaking life. I have a wonderful supportive family. I've got a wonderful supportive work family. Great employees. I that's that's my work oh, family. Yeah, okay. All right, all right. Um, because we're not employees, <laughs> even though technically we are, we're all family. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we're all paid the same because that's it, it's equity, right. right? Um, you know, but I don't have the billions of dollars or millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank to be financially free and retire by the time I'm 30, because now I'm 40, <laughs> you know? So I missed that mark, which was one of my goals. Mm -hmm. But it's, so it's, it's, there's one about, like, I get the idea of saving money to have the life you want to live, 
Mm -hmm. but about for what it is for me is like, I want people to live the life they want to live and be able to save the money so that later on in life, they can continue living the life they want to live. Ooh. Right. That's a that. big purpose of what desire to inspire studios is about and why that name came about. It's not just about money. It's about passion. It's about the life that you want to live. That's true. Whatever that life is, that's what we're here to do and talk and, about. And, and to prevent how... inflamed entitled itis that consumes. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Consumes sometimes privileged Affluenza. communities. Oh, yeah. Inflamed entitled itis, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. And you, if you if you treat other people's heart as toilet paper because you're, you think you're more important than they who jump lines or you do things it's like that about the same think way. think think with a generous heart for yourself what that feels like to you and uh privilege i i think the biggest thing i personal assistance in show business i've never seen so much suffering in mm. personal assistance in show business and music the suffering that they go through from watching a person treat them so shabbily, so, so inhumanely, uh, out of self-importance, that it's really important for us to teach this, that you can overcome all of that by just the dignity of self-respect for all. Just that. That is the biggest generational wealth. Treating people well. Dr. King said it. Gandhi said it. You know, uh, every great avatar and every great woman and man who ever led this country. Eleanor Roosevelt was so brilliant. She would say, you know, nobody can make you feel inferior mm -hmm. unless you give them your permission. Mm -hmm. So the wisdom comes from how you treat people. Treat them well. And treat yourself well, too, right? Yep. Most definitely. Well, I think we are just about out of time. That's a perfect today. note to end it on. It <laughs> we, have one, we have one more thing I to hate end it on. when that happens. Speaking of generous uh, yes, hearts sir. and generous pocketbooks, uh, Mike, we have we have to do an ask because we're yes, we're course. not good at that, um, sure. but we're getting better. Yes, um, and we're we are ultimately to summarize it, looking for sponsors and donations to help this program keep going for our donuts for breakfast, and we are the right. ready. Uh, do you want to give us only about 30 seconds sure. of something? Folks, you've just listened to this conversation that we've had. I think this conversation is really an urgent and important conversation to have with our kids and our grandkids as they grow. One of the best things we can do is fund these kind of things philanthropically and with charitable donations and with anchored, grounded donations. If you can help us out, We'll still keep having these conversations intergenerationally. This is an important conversation to have. When you see this, set your kids down and say, let's watch this together. When you're doing that, you're doing a bigger favor for them because this conversation was astounding to me. I mean, I loved it. I wished when I was young, mom and dad would have had this conversation with me right in front of me. But we're here now and you can help us keep this conversation going from last week to this week. And we've got a couple more we're going to do. Mm -hmm. If you can donate to us, please help us out. Thank you very, very much. We'll keep teaching what we, we think everyone needs to hear from us intergenerationally. Yeah. And we appreciate you very much and respect you very much. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. And thank you, everyone, for watching and being a part of our show and being people helping people. Uh, I'm been enjoying saying this remember go out there smile uh share a smile with someone share a compliment someone make someone's day and thank you for being people helping people and thank you mike raw and grimshaw oh that's a poem in itself right my, there my, my, my for being on our show today and uh have a wonderful day i don't want to do a selfie real quick you know